Oh yeah, there are some great tasting meadow mushrooms out there, but not all meadow mushrooms are good to eat. And this particular patch of mushrooms is a little tricky. So it's time for another episode of the game that I call Will I eat this or not? Here's how the game goes. I'm going to show you some key features of these mushrooms. This will allow you to mull over the question Will I eat this or not? Then I'll go through the steps and thought process I'm using to identify the mushrooms and decide Will I eat this or not? So let's take a look at these mushrooms up close and personal. Welcome to Haphazard Homestead. I'm glad you're here. I'm Holly Chris, and I like to eat wild mushrooms. Why is this patch of mushrooms so tricky? Because when I found these at the end of October one year, the weather had been super wet. It had rained on 23 out of the last 26 days with nearly nine and a half inches of rain. Extremely wet weather can make a mushroom look different than in more typical conditions. Take a look at this. There are some scales on the top of that mushroom cap, but they're more like fibers that are part of the cap, not scales that will flake off. The gills are a deep pink. Does the stalk have a ring around it? I don't see a big obvious ring. Does the base of the stalk sit in any kind of cup underground? Look at how rugged and ragged the edge of that mushroom cap is. When I rub the cap and try to bruise it, does it change color? I don't see any change in the color. I left the little button mushrooms to keep growing. The first thing I did was to put the cap on a piece of white paper to make a spore print. In this light, it's a lot easier to see the scales on the mushroom cap. In just a day, the gills have changed color and the spores are definitely chocolate brown, a deep chocolate brown. After I made this spore print, I went out of town for a few days. When I came back, I found this group of mushrooms in the same spot. Look at those. Those were the two little buttons just coming up, and now they're full grown. They look a little shaggy too, but not quite the same. Look at those holes and pits. Are those holes from bugs or slugs? All these mushrooms have the same holes, and there's another little button mushroom with little holes in it too. So the first thing is to check if these new mushrooms have the same characteristics of that very first one that I picked. Because in the same area, different kinds of mushrooms can grow together. The stalk looks the same. There's no cup at the base. The gills look the same. The ragged edge of the cap looks the same. They are all very waterlogged. Here's a close up look. This is where the soil line was, right there and this is where it was underground. Those are such beautiful gills. These are turning from pink to that nice chocolate brown. I'm looking for signs of a ring around the stem. There's no obvious ring, but there's more there than just a smooth stalk. Those little pieces could be the remnant of a ring from a veil that covers the gills when the mushroom is just a button. Look at how bright pink those gills are. And look how bright pink the gills are in this little cap of a button mushroom. Oh, and then look at these. These were the little buttons that I saw the first time. Now they're big, mature mushrooms. The one on the left doesn't seem to have any ring, but the one on the right looks like it does have some remnant of a veil. It's definitely not a ring that I can move up and down the stalk, but it's something more than a smooth stalk. The base of the stalk comes to a point on both mushrooms. The one on the left is a double mushroom where two of them grew together. And their tops look shaggy, not as much as the first mushroom, but shaggier than the caps of the newer ones. The cap comes off really easy, so the gills are not attached to the stalk. You can see how waterlogged this mushroom is, and how the color of the gills has seeped into the top of the stalk and even up into the cap. Now I'm going to look to see whether those holes mean the mushroom is all bug infested. And I'm going to see if the mushroom changes color where it's cut or broken. That still looks nice inside. There's no bug damage at all. That purple color is not a reaction to being broken or wounded. It's color from the gills seeping into the flesh of the mushroom. 
that can happen with some kinds of mushrooms when the weather is extremely wet. Look at how much staining there is. That's a lot. So, there are the clues. You can stop the video here if you want and leave me a comment below about what you think these mushrooms are and... Will I eat this or not? I'm going back to the house and then show how I decide... Will I eat this or not? Okay, here's the basket of mushrooms where we can take a closer look. This is the next day, so the mushrooms have had a chance to dry out a little bit and are not so waterlogged. Rather than just look at pictures on the internet endlessly, I'm going to use a set of identification keys. That is, tools that help us make choices between one option or another and work out what kind of mushroom this is. I'm going to start off with the key in the front and back cover of this great little book, All That the Rain Promises and More by David Aurora. By using this key, we can work out what general group of mushrooms that we've got just by making choices on a limited amount of information for each choice. So the first choice is whether the mushroom has gills underneath the cap or not. Clearly this mushroom has gills. They're beautiful gills. So we move over to this second block and have to make a choice. Are the mature gills white, pinkish, or yellow? And are there some other characteristics like having a sack at the base and scales or patches on the cap? Clearly, the gills on these mushrooms are not white, pinkish, or yellow. So we can move down to the third block of choices. This third block might be a little tricky because it's asking whether the gills on the youngest mushrooms were covered up by a protective veil. I didn't pick any of the youngest mushrooms, so I can't say. But it also says that if there was any veil, did it leave a ring on the stalk or not? And then look closer at that second choice. It asks if the young gills are covered by a veil that usually forms a ring on the stalk. That means there can be exceptions. Take a look at these stalks. It doesn't look like there's a ring, but it's not a smooth stalk either. And if we think about the mushrooms that we had in the field, there were those scales along the stem. That's the remnants of a veil. And that raggedy edge on the mushroom cap is also part of the remnant of the veil around the gills. This is really a tricky part of these mushrooms and having those really wet conditions didn't help. Now we're down to the fourth set of choices. The first option is whether the mature gills are a deep chocolate brown and whether they hang free from the stalk of the mushroom. The gills can be pink or white when they're young, but it's the mature gills that need to be chocolate brown. The other option is that the mature gills are some other color or the gills are attached to the stalk. It's easy to see here that the gills do hang free from the stalk. Another way to check that is to see if the stalk makes a clean break from the cap of the mushroom. And you can see here that it does. So that means these mushrooms are some kind of agaricus. There's 24 pages of agaricus mushrooms in this little book. I'm not gonna just flip through all the pages hoping to find which one is which. There's too much information to process. For agaricus mushrooms, I like using this key for Central California. It seems to work well in my area here in Oregon's Willamette Valley. The first big decision is whether the caps and stalk change color when they get injured. Now, even though the caps and the stalks were stained because the mushrooms were so soggy and waterlogged, they didn't change color no matter what I did to them. It's especially important to check for a change in color at the base of the stem, but there was no color change when I sliced the stalks either. This next decision is easy. I found these mushrooms in an open grassy area, not in the woods. In looking at this next set of options, these mushrooms are not short and stocky. They had no trouble coming up all the way out of the soil, and there was no ring that flares out like a skirt. The next set of choices asks about the cap. Does it start off shaggy and woolly and then look like it has fibers or scales? That top option may seem like a good choice, but look at the second option. It really fits better because the young button mushrooms were not shaggy. 
and many of the mushrooms were really more smooth than shaggy or scaly, and they are definitely more white than brown. So now we're down to the last set of choices. One mushroom is mildly toxic, and one is edible. There are a lot of words here, so it seems complicated, but it really is not. The mildly toxic mushroom, Agaricus californicus, has a persistent and noticeable ring around the stem. The edible Agaricus campestris has a very thin veil that protects the gills of the young mushroom. That veil leaves a very temporary ring on the stalk. It's effinescent. It's ephemeral. It almost seems to dissolve. If it's there, it's inconspicuous and easy to miss. Now I'm double checking my work by going from the California key back to the guidebook and checking all the identification characteristics. It was crystal clear that this was an agaricus mushroom, but the key features are that the gills are pink when it's just a little button mushroom, and that ring on the stalk is so temporary and inconspicuous. So, will I eat this or not? Yes. Yes, I will. Absolutely. These are delicious mushrooms. If you're subscribed to my channel and click that notification bell, you can see how I cook these mushrooms. I've got other meadow mushrooms that I've been cooking up too. And of course, there will be other episodes of... Will I eat this or not? If you like eating wild meadow mushrooms, let me and everybody else know in the comments below. I hope things are going well at your place. Thanks for watching. Bye.